Hey everyone, <laughs> we're we're live now, Edie. We're live. I, I almost I almost just said a joke. That was good though. Keep going. <laughs> um, can you say it now that we're live, or was that for? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it it was it was fine. Somebody commented the case against Times New Roman. <laughs> it's too much. It's all just too yeah. much, John. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I don't even know what to say. We uh. So, all right, everyone uh, who's streaming with us, we have 40 people right now streaming, and I think that number's going to grow as we do the podcast. Um, I promised everyone that we would talk a little bit about the issues that have gone on over the last two weeks, but I think they really intensified at the end of last week. <laughs> AD's obviously been involved in this on the Twitter fight. My wife is very grateful that I don't have Twitter right now, because um, <laughs> I'd probably be tweeting, but... I've seen a lot of the what's transpired and um, AD, I, you may not know this, but earlier today I went over the articles G3 put out there against Christian nationalism and just gave my two cents on those. And um, I, I think we should be clear about the goal that we have in doing this and going through what's happened to explain it to people and then what our concerns are. So um, number one, I mean, I, I would love to see peace. Obviously, I think you would love to see peace too, right, AD? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've been I've been calling for it. Yeah. So we, we would love to like have G3 guys who are making some of the statements that they're making. Um, talk to Stephen Wolf, William Wolf, either of us, anyone who can maybe um, help clarify things. And I, I think it's important for people to know that olive branches have been extended. Um, I know. I mean, the only person I've in G3's orbit that I've reached out to is Scott, Scott and Neil, and I invited him on the podcast and stuff. That's obviously that hasn't happened. Um, I I was hoping William Wolf would be on here, but he's not here yet. I know he's reached out. AD, I know you've reached out. I don't know if you want to say anything about that. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll just I'll just say that I've had a few conversations behind the scenes. Um, you know, one with Virgil that I don't want to really talk about. Um, one with an undisclosed party, and then. Uh, uh, I've even actually recently had a conversation with Michael O'Fallon um, that I probably won't share the details on that either. But I mean, I, I you know, there are t conversations happening to some degree. Um, is it leading to results? <laughs> are they productive <laughs> is is the question, <laughs> is it a I suppose. Debate? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are they productive? Is there a, right. a willingness? So um, I said on the podcast earlier today, I don't know if you agree with this, A.D., but one of the issues that's going on with G3 people, and, and I, I'm using that term just because the, the articles are on the G3 website and it's people in that orbit who are making a lot of these claims. It, it It's not so much the issues as much as it is, I think, the way people feel about it, the attitude that sure. we feel like we've been talked down to for years and then we lost all faith in institutions in 2020. And now we, we feel like we're living again what we lived in like 2018, 2019, 2020. That the people that we trusted are they're not listening or they're um they're, they're using the same tactics against us i mean I, I i've heard you articulate some of these things i think that's yeah. the frustration um and, and and so yeah like clarity right now and humility are, are probably two of the things that I, and i'm not saying this for just g3 but all of us that we need like a lot of but from my point of view and ad correct me if i'm wrong it's been mostly people on our side of the fence who have been trying to reach out and um, make some progress in this direction. I don't know if I see the same thing happening on the other side. I'll say this. I, I don't know about what's happening behind the scenes, so I can't really comment on that. You know what I mean? I would say, though, that that publicly it's it's pretty clear that there's there's one side that simply will not have this discussion at least right now and they keep that's what they keep saying you know not right now let us put our little articles out there and and stuff like that but the problem is that they've been putting lots of stuff out there and just refusing to engage pretty much at all um beyond what you were mentioning john sort of the typical sort of you know accusations and innuendo and stuff like that so yeah like i don't want to say that behind the scenes like none of that's going on i i, I don't think that's necessarily true but definitely publicly Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, well, okay. So, and my view is limited, but that's the, uh, I would say that's the perception that I think people who are sure. on our side of this, uh, oh, that's sure. how they feel that they, they feel like they've, 
they've looked up to some of these guys and now these mm-hmm. guys are attacking Christian dumb Christian cultural Christianity. It's not even just Christian yeah. nationalism. I, I have right. people texting me that are, who are telling me, John, I don't even know about Christian nationalism. I never read the book. I'm not on board this, but uh, right. I, I feel like now I, I'm a Christian nationalist. Cause I, I'm, sure. I'm not with those guys that's sure. happening. And I don't know how much it's happening, but it's definitely happening. Oh, it's happening quite a bit. I mean, I, I, yeah. I've had n- a number of conversations and then there's some that I just can't get to because I just, you know, don't have time to talk to everybody. But but yeah, and there's tons of conversations that start just like that. I, I don't even know what Christian nationalism is all about, but I do know that like dunking on Christian culture in, in, in 2023 when the alternative is tranny culture really doesn't make any sense at all. And it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, I just had a conversation a few minutes ago with someone about that. Yeah. He said, look, we're in a situation. Um, I, I just got an email too from uh, Rosaria Butterfield who said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be at the Capitol tomorrow in North Carolina and we're going to be protesting uh, the, the transgender surgery stuff. And like, mm-hmm. that's, that's where it's at. That's like this. Um, that's what Christian nationalists want to see, but we can work together. I think you made a video Absolutely. on that. We can work together with people who they, they are not on board with everything, but like we, we have a long way to go. In, mm-hmm. in just about any state before you can implement um, anything close to what we had, even at the founding of this country. Well, well that's so. exactly right. And, and my, that, that's, that's kind of what my, the drumbeat of my videos had been, you know, obviously every now and then I'll put out a, a funny thing or whatever, but the drumbeat of my videos is look, we can work together because, you know, right now we need all, you know, we need as much, you know, unity as we can get around just a few issues. Like there's a few key issues right now that are that you know i think we have a lot of unity on you know abortion and the tranny stuff you know there's there's other issues nobody's saying there's not other issues but there's like a few things that i think we all agree on that we don't have to necessarily snipe each other because there's not complete agreement on everything like just because ad robles might be in favor of some kind of a blasphemy law in 50 years doesn't mean you can't you know be like oh yeah you know let's stop this tranny culture let's actually use the weight of law against this like We can do that legitimately. Um, So that's what I've been kind of saying. Like, let's let's actually work together. Let's actually listen. You don't have to be a Christian nationalist. I've never said anyone needs to be one. John, I think you said in your most recent video that you don't even use the term for yourself. I don't. Yeah, this is totally fine. I'm I I don't have any problem with that. Um, But, you know, they clearly have a problem with with it. (laughs) They're going to go clearly for it. Yeah. So so what I thought would be helpful since our, our goal is to to clarify and then to uh, share concerns um so hopefully we can make some progress and i hope people from g3 are listening or hey if uh, anyone in the comments from g3 wants to post a comment i'll you know give me the email i'll send you the link you can hop on right now and we'll talk definitely we want that um so anyway uh why don't we do that why don't we go through just for the people who aren't on twitter kind of what's happened and i know Eddie might make fun of me here you said i love these things that's it's so true <laughs> I'm Power it's like Len Beck's chalkboard, like every episode he had to have a chalkboard and uh, I have to have a PowerPoint. So I, um, I wish I could show you like the way I take notes. It's just a disaster. Like I can't show you these because some of them are private, but like, yeah, anyway, <laughs> continue. <laughs> All right. So, um, AD, feel free to, to hop in anytime you want, yeah. but this is going to be the, the story. And these are just the high points. I mean, I had to like delete, I had to sift through so much stuff and delete yeah. so much stuff. This all started, from my view, AD, I don't know if you agree, uh, like April 17th, April 18th, Josh Bice mostly, but others got involved in this. Um, and, and even before that, April 15th, uh, mm-hmm. w- was saying all kinds of like odd stuff. Like he, he was saying things like he was he's putting polls out there. How many of my Christian friends would be in support of a Protestant pope? Uh my Christian nationalism questions are purposeful. So today I'd like to know uh, any of my Twitter friends would support integralism, which is a Roman Catholic social theory. Um, and so he's associating with that. And then, you know, Timon Klein asks him about that. And his response is like, what is integralism? Like define it. And he says, how about a direct question for you? Do you support integralism? Which I'm just I'm like scratching my head. I'm like, I don't understand. Like we, we haven't even defined our terms and we're doing this. Uh, this is uh, like trying to determine where sure. people line up based on a label, but not a concept. Right. So anyway, a bunch of guys, Owen Strand started to to, to say some things, Gabe uh, Hughes uh, said some things. And 
you know, and, and then Scott O'Neill, I thought he took the cake a little bit with this tweet where someone was asking if the about the Plymouth Colony since they founded it mm -hmm. for the glory of God. And Scott O'Neill says it's unbiblical. Right. Right. So this all culminates, I think, in one of Stephen Wolf's reactions, because we didn't even know this was about Stephen Wolf yet. Um, we, we kind of, I think, assumed it was. But Stephen Wolf asks, asks Josh, are you responding to actual arguments or the arguments of your imagination? Like, he's just, I don't understand, like, what are you even talking about? Because he's like, I don't talk about this in, in my book. So, like, who, who are you talking about? Yep. So, so that's where this whole thing starts. Well, and, and let me just uh, let me yeah. just jump in here. So, so every one of these tweets represents them being educated on this. So, so when Josh Bice puts out this poll, how many of my Christian friends would be in support of a Protestant pope? People are voting, of course, but then they're also saying, "Hey, Josh, you know, this is the thing. Like, we actually don't want a Protestant pope. You know what I mean? Like, that's not part of it. That's not part of what we believe. So, like, you know, maybe tomorrow, don't post about the Protestant pope." And every single time someone, someone from G3 would again post about the Protestant Pope. And so each one of these things is just they're, they're putting this information out there and people are explaining to them very calmly and carefully. And, and, and like, for example, the, the Gabe Hughes and Owen Strawn here, where they're saying it's, it's yeah. terrible that that Stephen Wolf isn't exegeting the text in this book. And, and, and I saw, you know, multiple comments that said, hey, you know, this isn't that kind of a book. This is more of a historical, uh, you know, theory book. It's not really about uh, exegeting the text. And so, you know, yeah, you might think it sounds stupid to just assume the reformed tradition, but that's what this book is about. Like if, if you don't want, if you don't like that, that's okay, but it's not, it's totally legitimate to write a book. That's not an exegetical book as a Christian. That's legitimate. And so, so they, 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 they're, they're in, with all these tweets, I just want to make, to make sure people know that they, people were engaging with them in good faith here. Eh, we're not really into integralism. That's not really what it's about. Let's move on to something else. You know what I mean? That's oh, kind of yeah. how it went yeah. down. Well, I, I know even in uh, like chat threads and stuff, people were trying to figure out what was going on. They're saying, do you think this is just ignorance? Is, is that what's going on? Sure. And, and ignorance, of, of course, can be fixed easily. You just have a conversation sure. and they say, that's not what I mean. Um, and that's, I think, the stage that some of these tweets represent. I, I will say this, too. Uh, this kind of came out of nowhere. Like Stephen's mm. book, I've never seen a book in Christianity more universally hated in my lifetime than Stephen Wolf's mm. book. I mean, it's like every single outlet had to do a, a critique, but most of these critiques were coming from the left. And we just sure. kind of rolled our eyes. We're like, yeah, these are woke guys. And and, and now it's more, it, it's guys who like these guys signed the statement on social justice. Some of them headed that up. So it's not just, you know, quote unquote, like the hard woke guys, although we might get to that in a minute, whether this is some of the stuff is, is woke or not. But uh, but I think like when Stephen first came out with his book, G3 could have done reviews like everyone else was doing. It took a while and then it was all at once. And it started with these like um, I, I don't know, AD, if this makes sense to you, but I, I, I watched a lot of Westerns growing up. Right. And I immediately thought of the scout, you know, the scout always goes out ahead yep. of the army, the cavalry to see, see if there's any like Indian tribes or something. And I immediately thought of that. Um, when, when I was putting this together, I was like, these, these are like scouting tweets and I'm not, I don't want to put motives in anyone's, like, I don't know what people are thinking, but sure, it's sure. like, um, you know, it, 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 it's seeing what the response is going to be almost. Sure. Um, cause there, there testing weren't any the articles waters, yet. So to Test, speak. Testing it. Yeah. 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 So that was the beginning. Well then Steven, why Steven? <laughs> <laughs> Steven puts this tweet out and we uh, it basically says white evangelicals are the lone bulwark against moral insanity in America. We've talked about it. 80s talked about it. <laughs> it was a whole thread. It wasn't one tweet, but um, everyone <laughs> lost their mind about this. Yeah. And there, there's a lot of examples. Canon Press you know, was uh, saying things, even his own publisher, Scott and Neil exhibit a for why some of us are concerned about Christian nationalism. Um, Virgil Walker uh, Owen Strand, like a lot of these guys were just taking shots at it. it, it this I'm is an emo what you're seeing. Yeah. Sorry, John. No, what good. you're seeing is a visceral emotional reaction. None of this is, th they're not thinking at all. This is just a reaction. They might like to think that they're very re reasonable and rational, but these are emotional reactions. There's no doubt about it. Um, and I, you know, and you know, like I said, I've had conversations on, behind the scenes. This is emotion coming out. Yeah. Yeah, pure and simple. I mean, even some of the mocking things. I know some people are upset with lower level accounts or anonymous <laughs> accounts making memes. Um, but like you, you have like in this, like Virgil Walker saying things like, you know, I'm glad that somebody saw fit to come get their boy. 
to Canon Press when they when they said it was dumb. And and I'm like, yep. well, you know, that's that's mocking, right? So sure. and and I think a little mocking's okay now and then. I'm 100%. not against 100%. that. Yeah. But um but, but yeah, it, it's weird though that like the the aggression, the um was coming from that side and now that as we progress we'll show it's kind of the winds are are blowing in the opposite direction it's like hey brother we gotta be <laughs> gotta be nice to one another now we got like mm. that's what i don't understand that like lack of sense of proportion and lack of awareness um so so that happens and there's reaction to steven and, and i don't know that steven like i don't know if he did anything like that that would have been noticed i'm not sure or like, like the question I've had is like, was this already in momentum? And then Steven just happened to do this tweet that something was going to be made out of it anyway, or, sure. or was this the perfect storm? And I don't know, but Steven doesn't has another tweet where he says, you don't need to wait for revival to re-Christianize the institutions when a strong willed and resolute minority is enough, which politically again is a hundred percent true. Look at what happened. Nothing controversial. Yeah. There's nothing controversial then. There's a cultural Christianity is enough. I mean, I watched the gay marriage thing. I watched that go from the majority, vast majority was against it to now we, you can't even talk about it without losing your job. Right. And, and how it happened was with a gay culture. Like our culture is gay. It's as gay as it can be. That's right. And so, and so, so, you know, lots of people that don't care about homosexual marriage at all. Like as far as they're concerned, you know, they don't care. They probably don't really want to hang around lots of, uh, you know, transsexuals and stuff like that. But, most people are just like, oh, I guess, I guess we're doing the, the gay thing now. And you know, they're, they're going to go and, and, and watch football on Sunday. Who cares? Like that, this, that's what this was about. Like you don't have to be like anyone who thinks we have like 60% or 50% like zealous LGBT supporters is out of their mind. That's not how it is. It's like, I don't know. I don't know what the numbers are, but it's very small percentage are like totally into the LGBT thing. But yet, you right. know, we're, everything's gay now. Here we are. And and Christians can do are. that in areas where they still have some hundred percent cultural. Yeah, like it's very different living in Virginia where I lived and living in New York. And I'm sure you've lived other places, AD, where oh yeah. Like in New York, I couldn't pass a Sabbatarian law right now. But guess what? There's still blue laws on the books in some southern like <laughs> counties. So um, all right. So so that was the second thing. And then everyone lost their mind again. And this is this was, I think, the moment when I was starting this. Like yeah. I, I, at this point, I was like, OK, I, I this this seems just very purposeful to me. Like, I don't think it's ignorance anymore. Like that, that was those were the thoughts at least I was having because I didn't know how to make sense of it um, because like everyone's tweeting against cultural Christianity now. I shouldn't say everyone. I put a few representative examples. I could have put more, but this was the um, moment when you realized you know. that these people were hammers looking for a nail like they they didn't. It, it did. They were going to find something. They they were out for blood because that comment about cultural Christianity. It's so obvious what he's talking about, and they all turned it into like, who cares about the gospel? Basically, yeah, yeah, exactly. We're we're trying to somehow Christianize without the gospel, without repentance and faith. And I I'm like, where in the world are they? I'm like rereading the tweet. I'm trying to figure it out. So um, I don't know if we need to read all these. I'll just read. Uh, let's see. Let's read. Owen Strawn says uh, you can't have your cake and eat it, too. You can't say I'm not doing exegesis because I'm not a theologian. Oh, I've already read that one. That wasn't the one I wanted to read. Let me read this one. Uh, by the way, there is no such thing as cultural Christianity. It's not a viable, viable form of Christianity. It's certainly not found in Scripture. Cultural Christianity does not exist in any in any in any positive form. I just, I, I don't, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I, I, I can't, it, it's, it's the clown shoes thing that I guess you were posting. I just, I'm like <laughs> in any positive, like there's literally been no form of cultural Christianity ever in all of history that, um, so no, <laughs> no, apparently not. You know, Owen, Owen has spoken. I mean, I, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> I don't, I don't either. I don't either. But, the, but these are the things that I, I, I can't make sense of. Uh, Scott O'Neill said, fundamentally, a nation can't be Christian unless every citizen is a professing Christian and or a Christian king is physically ruling that nation with a rod of iron. And uh, like th this is like what every country before like 150 years ago, every Western European country, even Eastern European countries, even some African countries would all have said we're Christian. Like and then no one, no one thought like that was against the gospel or that was like, but, but the, th there seems to be like a, um, a hang up with calling a nation Christian. 
it, 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 I don't it get boggles it. my it boggles my mind. I mean, you could see, there's so many ways to retort this. I mean, this guy Rorschach here is asking, does it apply to church family ministry? What about Israel? Not all of Israel are true Israel. That was true back when Israel first became Israel. Was they were they still Israel? Of course they were still Israel, even though not everyone of Israel was truly in Israel. Everyone right. gets this. They were all circumcised. They were all Israel. They're all the nation of Israel. Obviously, they weren't all uh, devoted to the Lord. The, the, but but everyone understands that this, it's so stupid to even talk about this because everyone gets it. Like we all know that that w w when we say, oh, yeah, we're a Christian family. I'm not saying literally every Robles that's ever existed is a Christian. Right. Everybody gets that unless you're talking about Christian nationalism. And then you say dumb things. And, and, and here Scott is saying, no, you can't call a family a Christian family unless there's everyone is a professing Christian. Or Christian they're, they're, ministry. G3 is not a Christian ministry because I can't be sure that everyone is a Christian. <laughs> I didn't even think like, of that. That's like, am one, I even yeah. sure? Like, 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 and maybe G3 is small, right? G3 is small, yeah. but let's look like a big ministry. You know, Lifeway. Is Lifeway a Christian uh, bookstore? Does that even exist anymore? I don't know. But is it a Christian bookstore? Well, I don't know. How could a bookstore be Christian? Because, I mean, is every worker a Christian? Yeah. Is every checkout girl a Christian? This is a stupid way to, to think. Like, this is this is not how we normally think. This is how you think when you're being very emotional and you really want to find a nail to hammer down. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, obviously you can't say there's a Christian church by that standard. Um, right, of course. I mean, not, not everyone that goes to your church is a professing Christian. Some people go that are unbelievers that are there just to hear the message. So I guess you're no longer a Christian church either. Yeah. <laughs> so here's Montana Viking said this earlier. He said, I think G3 has a valid concern calling those who are unregenerate g regenerate. And it's nothing new. Dr. Martin Lloyd Jones objected to Christian nationalism for the same exact reason, though I don't think Martin Lloyd Jones. Well, <laughs> they didn't have Christian nationalism in the sense that we're thinking of, but but some people are thinking this. Ad, they really do think that what's happening is people on the Christian nationalist <clears throat> side are calling those who are unregenerate regenerate. I haven't seen yeah. any of that though. There's no primary yeah. source I can point to. I'm not yeah. sure why that's being said over and over. Yeah, but, I'm not. I'm not sure either. I, I don't think that's a legitimate concern at all. Just to be honest, I I, I don't think that that's actually happening. Um, to identify a nation as Christian, um, it, it, as far as like again in the normal usage of language, you know, you, you call so, an entity a Christian because we operate the way a Christian entity of that nature should operate. So in my family, we're a Christian family because I operate it and I rule it and I reign it as a Christian, and so I do Christian things with my wife and my kids. And, you know, the organization's Christian. And the yeah. same thing would be for a country. It's a Christian nation because we run it the way Christians ought to run a country. Um, this does not say anything about the, re the regenerate or non-regenerate status of any individual or group of individuals. It's just how you run the country. You do it according to the Bible, basically, according to the laws of Christ. One of the tweets that got a lot of traction, I have to mention, though, is Scott O'Neill. Um, I think this might be, be the time I emailed him because I was like, I, we need to to have a conversation here um he, he put yes uh he's responding to someone but he says he makes this comment in his response i want as many christians as possible in public office which great oh, yeah. right i do too not so they can enforce christian law but so that they can prevent pagans from enforcing pagan law <laughs> i i don't know i i w so, Again, so there was like, a yeah, yeah there yeah, was a yeah. debate about whether or not god like moral laws are christ's laws that like i i guess that's the distinction like you could have moral laws that apply to everyone and then you have christ's laws or or, or the i guess that's the second table or something mm -hmm. like that, that's, i'm trying to make sense of it i'm not getting a, a good explanation do you understand this i i i mean no i i, I it's just <laughs> it, you just have to you no, just have alone. to no no it, this is the kind of thing that I, I was about to say like you know, these tweets really desperately cry out for, hey, maybe you should have chatted with one of us first to, to think this one through because, you know, like I've got so many questions like so. So they're just literally just there to like play defense. They're like, so what laws are there? Like if they're stopping the pagans from doing pagan law, what laws remain? Like what are these what are these laws that are not Christian, but they're not pagan either? What are those and, and what do you call them? What are you basing them on? Because I would argue that he would, and I think he would say this: you base them on 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 God's morality, right? Right. Right. And, and he who's said God? that. I think he said that. Yeah. Right. But who's God? It's Christ. So right. They're Christian laws. <laughs> they're Christian laws. They're Christ's laws, you know. And 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 there you go. I mean, 
I, I don't see where the disconnect is, but again, this could have used a little bit of thinking through in my opinion. Well, we're not, and we're not, these aren't like lower level Twitter accounts. Like, like no. people need to realize this is, we would not be talking about this. This is, this is the VP of, of, of whatever on, from G3 ministry. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's like the, yeah, the second in command or whatever yeah. uh, of the G3, which it, like, I'm sure. And I think Scott's a music guy, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm sure he has wonderful music and I'm sure there's, there's wonderful things. I, I know there's wonderful things. G3 has put out there great materials. Sure. But <laughs> This, I guess the disappointment for me, and I know this is going to sound harsh, AD, I don't know if you've said this before about this, but the the root concern I have is a hermeneutical one, actually, because mm. Stephen's book is fairly new. It's written in English. I think it's fairly understandable. If you're educated, especially, it should be understandable. He uses some big words, but okay, get a dictionary. If you can't, as someone who is a ministry leader, training, I guess, if, essentially, you are training men for ministry. You are training them how to interpret the Bible, sure, which is in an ancient language, which is actually in some places harder to understand. And you can't interpret just basic, a basic book that I guess that's that's a concern for me. Um, sure. Like, I, I hold these guys to a higher standard, I think, in my mind that they could interpret that. And yeah, I mean, has, has Scott read the book? I, I don't know. I'm not trying to zing him. I don't know if he has. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe he hasn't. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if he's, well, he's, he went after Stephen in his blog and he was quoting Stephen all over the place. Got and it. Okay. So he probably so has. He, 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 yeah, he made out like he did. But, but even if he hadn't, I mean, th this is not like Stephen didn't invent that idea that, you know, the civil governing authorities' laws, you know, should be definitely based on something. So, you have to base, base that on God's moral law. Well, I mean, we have a tweet. Every major, we, right? Every major confession said it. I mean, like this is not, you know. Anyway, good. No, we have a tweet though. Is what I'm saying. It's, it's not even. It's not even like you don't have to read his book. You just have to read this tweet. That's there all you, you have to do. That's that's what I'm saying. These are all reactions <laughs> against that tweet. Like, right. That, right. Like if you can't interpret this tweet, I, I just have a hard time with how do you interpret the word of God. That's all I'm right, saying. Right. Right. That's so, fair. um, yeah. Oh, I don't know what. What happened with my font there? Oh no, my font. My font. No, this it's is off. this is not good. This is not good. This whole <laughs> we should just delete this whole video right now. Um, I'm gonna get in trouble for that. Anyway, uh, associations. Um, so I, I some I, I tried to catalog some of what I thought were the biggest. So we already talked about misrepresentations in the beginning, but th this came up, AD, and I'll just let you speak to this because you were like tagged in it and directly yeah. involved. There's been like a purity test, an associational purity oh, test of some kind. Um, and, and, and I, you know, I wanted to give, I, I want to give Tom the benefit of the doubt, Tom Buck, who's, he, yeah. he hasn't been as involved as the others, but he came out with this. And, and I think, I think what he's told others is that this is, he's trying to give you an opportunity to clarify, but, um, but he liked Virgil Walker's tweet. So, so he says, I sincerely hope some of the prominent yeah. Proponents of Christian nationalism would publicly denounce this. It's this guy, Corey Mahler, who says interracial marriage is tantamount to murder. And then Virgil Walker jumps in there and Tom likes the tweet saying, I could care less if they denounce it. I'm not surprised that Stephen Wolf follows this guy. My warning stands. And yet Scott O'Neill this morning, after all of the dust I thought had settled, retweeting it and, and just I, I, I don't like Corey Mahler. Well, I, I should let you talk, AD, because I'm <laughs> Corey. Corey's not representative of anything in our circles, but anyway, no, I, I'll, let me say this. So I'm trying, by, by the way, I'll say that I'm, I'm supposed to be talking to Tom on Wednesday. So Good. I'm sure, Good. I'm sure this will come up. That, that conversation was scheduled prior to this, but, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure this will come up at some point. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm glad I, you, I, you guys are talking. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I would never ordinarily answer a tweet like this. This is so dumb. It is so dumb, and it's dumb in Tom's case, too. It, it displays such a lack of savvy. I can't even – it boggles my mind. I believe him, though, that he didn't have any nefarious purposes. Normally, this kind of a tweet to get you to try to denounce something that is it's patent, patently obvious that you, you're not a part of, um, usually that's a tactic to smear you. I believe, I believe Tom that it wasn't. And Tom has built up a catch of, uh, of trust with me, which is the only reason I even considered answering it. So I did answer it and um, it, it's, 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 it's ridiculous that it's come to this. You know what I mean? Th this isn't helping on our, on our call. I'm going to ask him, don't involve me in this kind of thing again, because I will never answer it again. Um, 
but the thing is like this this kind of denunciation game this kind of like struggle session thing um we all we all knew that that was a scam like six months ago but now one side of this debate is is using this scam and that's what yeah. i want to call out like this like 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 tom knows better he knows what a struggle session is he knows this kind of thing is used as a tactic and usually it's very nefarious i believe him that he wasn't doing anything you know to try to hurt me but like this is this is my thing it's like we all of a sudden forgot everything the woke church did to us previously and now we're doing it to our brothers i don't get that well one of the things that i noticed right off the bat with this is the the association is made even by asking the question that's, that's the one of the of problems usually. yeah yeah you, just that's usually the point it's be they want me to yeah. be on like the, they want me to be associated with maybe ad might not be against this statement that says interracial interracial marriages tantamount to murder because uh, he was credibly accused after all and and to be honest it's worse that it's tom buck in my opinion because tom buck is more reasonable than some of these other guys he's been he hasn't been acting like this uh, like scott has or like 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 josh has in the last few weeks he hasn't been so for tom to have this question the, the accusation is that much stickier now i don't really care about this accusation because i've got like five or six people telling me to denounce you know inter, uh, interracial marriages tantamount to murder type tweets and i'm ignoring them because i don't care but it just sucks to have it and, and sorry if this is a baptist audience i can't use that word but it, it's not fun to have it you know be a guy that's like on your team do this to you it, it, like and again i don't think he'd had a nefarious purpose but but the lack of savvy here is it's hard to fathom in my opinion I, he knows he, he six months ago he would never have done this yeah why now yeah one, one uh, person makes a, a testing brew and made a good point honestly a lot of these, these issues could be avoided and resolved if we follow the principle of quick to hear and slow to speak which I, I couldn't totally. agree more. I, I do want totally. people to, to know that um, this was scheduled last week for, for this Monday. And one of the reasons yeah. I was traveling, but we wanted, I, I actually said, I think we, sh we can cool off over the weekend. And, and, and this has been going on already for over two weeks. So uh, it, it took, I was a little late in starting to respond to it, but now at this point, like, I think the, like enough has been said, yeah. And, um, you know, this whole struggle session thing, and, and I think that is the right word for it, is extremely disappointing to me. It, it creates this yeah. impression. And then um, people think that you must approve if you don't d play the game and denounce it. And and Corey Mahler, I don't know how much you know about him, AD. I did not know a lot about him until like, I don't know, maybe a month ago. It, it, funny enough, not in relationship to this. Uh, in the Missouri, the, the Lutheran, or what do they call it? The uh, Missouri Synod Lutherans. Yeah, yeah. He, he, Corey Mahler, I guess, was just excommunicated from the Missouri Synod. Just recently, Synod. I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's been in that process, I think, for a little while. But he's, yeah. he, he has no position. He has no position. In, and, and I had read a uh, statement from the president of the denomination on a podcast like a few uh, months ago. And I was... I, I was critiquing because the president was saying like we got this problem with these white supremacists these neo-nazis these <laughs> like he's just like crazy and it, it was cory mall i'm like who is cory mono and i just like i i was skeptical that there was even a guy like that but oh, okay there is a guy like that it's cory guy like that and, yeah what and, was so funny about this was I, i'm sorry to interrupt you yeah no no what's so funny about this is that i had that guy blocked so i had to unblock him to see what tweet tom was referring to and the reason i had him blocked is because i've been on a blocking tear lately and I had found out about this Corey guy, I'm pretty sure literally the day before. I had never heard his name before. And so I I, I found out who he was. I was like, yeah, that, I don't want to see that nonsense. So I blocked it. And and it's just the, the whole, it's like, apparently this guy is like well known by all the Christian nationalists. I'd never heard of him. And, uh, you know, and I I didn't, like, it's just, it's just, just insane. Like, this is just so insane that it came to this. Um but let me just say this. I'm not saying that Corey didn't deserve to be excommunicated, but I wonder when the last time they excommunicated someone who was pro-gay or pro-abortion. I'm just curious. I don't know the answer. Well, well, I was uh, going to say with the, with the LCMS, they have an issue because their catechism commentary that they came out with a few months ago <clears throat> had some 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 like pro-gay stuff in it. And yeah. it's it's creating a, a, an issue in the denomination. Yeah. And um, the president kind of associated these things like we, we have people critiquing this and. And, and and I read the statement. I know people are saying go back and read it. I read it. I read it again. And 
Yeah, like th this Corey guy, like he's bringing the whole <laughs> denomination to their knees. And, and I happen to know, and I, I can't get into details, but this is being used in the same way Tom used it. The same, this Corey Mahler guy. Of course. At, in local churches, guys who won't denounce Corey strong enough. They haven't, they haven't, uh, they, they, maybe they've done a podcast with them or they've, you sure. know, they've communicated with them, whatever. There's some association there and they didn't denounce him strong enough, even if they disagree. That's becoming grounds for, disciplinary processes and that's unbelievable that's to me that's absolutely insane that's absolutely insane and again i'm not saying Corey didn't i don't know anything about this man maybe i don't know what he's done i don't know what sins they've he's, he's, he's they've charged against him i don't know if he's deserved deserved to be excommunicated or not i'm assuming he did he doesn't seem like a very pleasant guy so let's just give that a benefit of the doubt but this this whole strategy of like denounce him kind of thing like again i don't think tom did it in this way but that's the standard reason this strategy is employed um in fact you know, I'm not going to be honest, like the next day, I'm pretty sure Virgil kind of insinuated that now Steven's guilty because he follows him. So I guess he doesn't denounce him because he follows him. Like, oh, like yeah, he did. I, I don't have that one up there. I don't think. It, yeah, it, it's already it's it's already like to the like it's already kind of devolved to that. That might be. Can you pull up that last screen, John? The one that had Tom's tweet to me. Uh, This one here. Yeah. Is that one? Yeah, yeah, there, here he is. It's right here. I'm not surprised Stephen Wolf follows this guy. My warning stands. There it is right there. Oh, okay. It's yeah, like, yeah. It's like, so, so. And Tom so liked that tweet. Virgil got the signal of what this was about. He did. And, and the thing is, like, I'm not saying that, that, that Tom was playing that game, but Virgil seems to think he is. Right. And yeah. so, so again, Virgil knew about the struggle session. He knows about it now. I'm sure he's denounced it before. But what's, what's, so what's all this? It's so again, it's like, I'm not offended by this. Like, listen, my name is associated with all kinds of evil stuff because people have lied about me quite a bit on the internet. I'm okay with that. That I, I, If I didn't like that, I would stop being on the internet. You know what I mean? Right, right. I'm okay with all of this. So it's not the fact that someone tried a struggle session with me. It's the fact that Tom Buck did. And Virgil Walker is apparently down with it. And everyone who who likes that too. Oh, yeah, I mean, Steven's following him. Yeah. Yeah. Not surprised. I mean, he's one of those guys after all. Yeah, yeah, that that's kind of disgusting. And I did a podcast. It's totally disgusting. Who, it's absolutely yeah, disgusting. Earlier, you can go check out. I talked about uh, th that whole piece Virgil wrote. And he's trying to say he's not saying that people are racist, that Stevens are racist. He, he's a ethno-nationalist, and he's making these distinctions. They're, they're yeah. not using the term racist. They're using the term ethno-nationalist. That's, a, that's which, a very strategic thing. <laughs> yeah. That actually well, does show a little bit of savvy. Because Virgil it, it, knows yeah. full well it, yeah. that racist racist doesn't mean anything. Nobody cares. Right. Ethnocentrist right. sounds pretty scary, though. And, and I'll agree. It, it, it does. does. It sounds scary. Sounds like a Nazi. Yeah, it's going to come bust oh, down your 100%. door. You're, so, you're not so there's some savvy here. It's just it's savvy in the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. But but under his the way that he treats Stevens quotes, though, I, I read on the podcast earlier yeah. quotes from George Washington. And I was like, uh, he would you would have to make George Washington out to be a proto Nazi like anyone who probably lived just about most people before like 1850 would have been, or 1900 would have been proto Nazis. Um, yeah, well, we, we got to get to some of the, uh, we, we'll finish this, but let's get to, there's a bunch of people who, uh, have Brian babes has been waiting, uh, Violet. Hey, Violet. What up? Can, can you, uh, turn your, sorry. <laughs> can you guys hear me? me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hi, guys. Uh, thank you for having this discussion. You did say that uh, William was going to be here, but I'll still ask the question because I think <laughs> he would be best to answer the question. So I, I wrote down the questions that I want to ask. Okay. So I think, uh, AD, you can answer one of the questions. Okay. Question one that I have. Do you see uh, why the term Christian nationalism is tied to being the walk right? and associated with racism, even if people cannot redeem the term work, why do you guys think mm. that uh, Christian nationalism can be redeemed if that's your position? Then another question that I have, why does it seem that uh, you are purposefully being contentious or belittling, uh, not being charitable with your brothers, especially when it comes to the disagreement on Twitter, or even what happened with the font situation. Because I think the principle behind the font, I do think oh, okay. that was not wise. 
Okay. Cool. It, I'll, so, I so, can answer the second one, John, but if you want to take the first one, because I, I don't think I'm the right oh. guy for that. Well, I, I, I might be with Violet a little bit on this. Like, I, I've had a hard time with redeeming the term in a way just because um, I know the baggage it has. And I know 100 years ago it was used by socialists who call themselves Christian nationalists as a way to subvert. And so I, I've been a little skeptical. I think Stephen's argument, because Stephen's aware of that, is that um, it, it's kind of like, you know, where right wingers or conservatives will take terms because the left has the biggest bullhorn that there's no way to to stop that right this second they just sure. do so in what, what we need to do some conservatives think is we, we take their terms like they call us deplorables and we're like yeah we're a deplorable <laughs> you know you know we we, we start taking things that right. they've said against us and we we're mocking them right um steven i think because it's scholarly it doesn't seem as mocking. It, it's like he, he took the term and 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 he and he says in the beginning of the book that he doesn't want to talk about fascism. He doesn't. He, he basically is taking this term appropriating for his own definition. And he gives you that definition. Mm -hmm. That's a prudence thing. That's a tactic thing. Um, yep. It's and as AD pointed out at the beginning, I'm not the most comfortable with the term. I just don't really have a great substitute for what we're like you could try to say we're constitutional what does that mean anymore you could say yep. oh yep. we're you, there, there's no term i can use that's going to like communicate anything because all the, the the words have been destroyed so so steven's trying to to craft something here and build something and um and i think that's a fair critique to, but it's a prudential critique that's not a principled critique you're not saying you're wrong in, in or you're evil sure. you're just saying like oh it's not a wise term to use let's use a different one does that make sense yeah i do get it i mean yeah the term, if it didn't have the baggage it comes with, it's actually a good term. Like, wouldn't you want a nation to be a Christian nation? Of course, I'd want to be uh, a nation right. to be a Christian nation, right? My eschatology goes to that direction. But if you just say Christian nationalism, even now how you have these people who have come out on Twitter, they say they're yeah. Christian nationalism. And they're Christians, but the stuff they're pretty much saying, like, you know, the stuff they, you know, calling Corey out Mahler. names or Owen yeah. Strand or what's in the Samir say. You know, that's there is no way anybody would be associating with that. But now it's like every time you have to pass up. <clears throat> and sometimes when you say Christian nationalism, people, they're automatically thinking about MAGA. There's so many things that's yeah. coming with it. It's kind of like a rainbow, right? When I see somebody wearing a rainbow, I'm not thinking about Noah, okay? I'm not thinking about the <laughs> promise. I'm just thinking, yeah. oh, there she is. That's an ally. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But I know what the scripture teaches about the rainbow. So yeah, it's yeah. almost like, okay, whether we like it or not, they have taken over the rainbow. I'm not looking, yeah, oh, it yeah. only has seven colors. I don't do that. You wear a rainbow, you you know what I mean? You belong <laughs> uh, to a certain camp. Of course. You tell <laughs> of me your Christian nationalism, so I automatically put you in a different camp. At the same time, it's just like, okay, you know, you're Presbyterian, right? Like, you know, you're sprinkling babies. I don't think people should be sprinkling babies, but you're a brother in Christ. We can, you mm. know, do things together. But I'm seeing that with Christian nationalism, it's like, if you're not in the camp of Christian nationalism, you are automatically an enemy. I am for agreement, like when we, the separation happened with the social justice warriors, right? It was clear cut. It was undermining a scripture. But now, Christian nationalism now is just like, so now every time you're checking, like, okay, which 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 label are you? Is, uh, is this one a racist? Or is this, is, I don't know, like, if, if well, it's well, helping. Well, you, you mentioned Presbyterians. Like, you know how many Presbyterians in the area AD and I live <laughs> are total heretics? <laughs> You know, the vast majority of people who call themselves Presbyterians. And I don't want to be associated with them. Um, but I don't want to be associated with Baptists in this area either. So, you know, I go past the Presbyterian church as a rainbow flag and a Ukrainian flag, and that's it. And um yeah, and and, and their rainbow yeah, but, isn't but about John, the flood. If yeah. the rainbow flag is there in, in, in for the sake of the promise of Noah. No, well, it, it it's got like a V in it intersex circle and yeah so it's <laughs> but but the, yeah the thing is though like yeah anyone can like co-opt a term or use a, a different term and can and, i just and say something it, john like yeah go at ahead. some point at some point you gotta you gotta draw a line in the sand somewhere because because these guys do have a huge megaphone right and so you know they're gonna slander literally any kind of christian political action and right now any kind of Christian political action is called the Christian nationalist. And they're going to they're going to they're, they're going to associate that with all kinds of baggage. And of course, you know, there is some that's legitimate there, as John was pointing out. Some of it's not legitimate. But eventually you, you can't let your enemy dictate what you call yourself. 
because especially when they're they're in control of all the megaphones right now and and it's not all of them but most of them christian yeah. nationalists i think yeah. i'm willing to take it because the the term itself but both of those words are completely fine i like both of those words um, if there's another term that's better, I'm I'm totally down. I'm not dedicated to the term. I don't think anyone needs to call themselves a Christian nationalist. I don't I don't really care. Even if even if you're against calling yourself a Christian nationalist, as long as you're doing the stuff and they're a Christian in, in politics, we it's I'm down with that. Um, but the thing is, you got to draw on the line of sand because they're they're oh, they're never going to let you have your terms. And before you know it, you're going to be down to one term, Christian, and then that's going to be associated with racism and whatever the the rest of it is as well. And are you going to shed that? I mean, I think some people might, but you got to put the, you got to draw a line in the sand somewhere. You know what I mean? You'll never, ever be able to control anything if you let your opponents dictate the terms. What about that second question, AD? Oh, so the second question, that was about uh, disrespectful uh, engagement, stuff like that. Yes. Like, you know, especially on Twitter and then like the, yeah. the old situation that we um, that took place, because yeah. I think. The font, you know, right. they, they were people they purposefully copied the Christian social justice. So to me, I'm like, <laughs> if sure. we are serious about having this discussion, why are we intentionally cop, you know, like doing that? To me, I think that's is undercutting the message. So it's almost like I'm sitting here. So now, like, okay, so why was that necessary? I, I listen, I, I I wasn't involved in that in any way, so I don't know what their thinking was. I, I think they said that they were doing it in homage to the statement on Christ, uh, Christianity and social justice. I believe them. I don't have any reason not to. Um, was it necessary? I mean, that's a hard question to answer. Nothing. It's not necessary, obviously. But, but your tweet, a, the, a, the tweet you tweeted just, out asking for for a statesman to 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 say something about the font. Uh, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. I I like that that they did that. So I I was appreciative of it. <laughs> yeah. So but, like, but oh, the thing so is, you don't mind that they use the font uh, copying what happened with the social justice statement? No. No. Why wouldn't like so? Okay, that's fine. If you you know you're entitled to have that position. So to me, sure. I'm seeing doing something like that. It's making the other. I have questions for G3, but they are not here. So it would it make sense to be asking you about? No, no, this that's thing? that's this is a legitimate question. Yeah. So, but to me, if you're doing something like that, if I'm sitting there, I'm a G3, I'm not going to take you guys serious because I'm thinking like, well, okay, you guys are well, playing games so, now so that's a, instead that's of great. us to that's have great. a serious conversation. That, that's great. No, but but the thing is, so so this is what I'll say about that. Can I just Let's say just, one thing for those sure, who are listening sure. who don't know what we're talking about? Because oh, we haven't point. gotten that's there a, yet. That's a very good point. There was this a statement. Unless you know. <laughs> there was a statement put out this morning called, uh, what was it called? Christian nationalism and the gospel. And the what Violet's saying is that they used a font and the and and, and the term and the gospel at the end of it was the whole aesthetic. It, it, the whole aesthetic of it looked yeah. a bit like the statement on social justice on the gospel. So this was a complaint Josh Bice had uh, about it. Why are you using that font? Because it, it makes it seem like there's an association there. Um, so all right, sorry. Go ahead, Ad. Right. So, so yeah, the, the statement comes out and like within f a few minutes there, you know, G3 is saying that, you know, th this is, this is inappropriate and some, you know, some kind of problem with that. Um, but here's the thing. So like, I think that, um, and this is a general comment about all of the memes, right? I can take, I can, I can take responsibility for my memes and some of the comments that I've been making. Cause I've been provoking G3. There's no question about it. I've been provoking them. Um, if you rip all that out of context, and you, and you say, well, AD, why why are you just provoking them, right? Why why do you respond in this disrespectful way? Um, in my opinion, that that's that's ignoring the context of what's actually happened because that's not all that's happened. What's happened is that you know for weeks, I, I, John, I think it was even longer than than April fifteenth. But let's just go with your your day, April fifteenth. For a couple of weeks, we're you know we're we're sitting here and 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 getting these weird sort of you know kind of cryptic you know polls and things about protestant popes and i saw one tweet from o'fallon that kind of insinuated that christian nationalists think you're saved by the government uh and, and it's just like it's just like this stuff that like we were it's not true and so what i saw for weeks was responses to that that were very respectful that were like aiming to like sort of like inform like hey you know we actually don't think that you you're saved by the government you know, what we do think, though, is that the government should be overtly Christian. And, of course, you're saved by the gospel and in faith in Christ and everything that we all agree on. And then the next day we get the same thing. And so, you know, we kind of went through that period for uh, multiple cycles, multiple cycles where 
it was we were seemingly ignored completely. It was like we told you that we don't believe in the Protestant Pope for five days straight, and for five days straight, you told us who's going to be the Protestant Pope. So to me, that's insanely disrespectful. And so sometimes if you're in a food fight and you can fight better, you got to do it. And so the memes were there to, to highlight the insanity of what we had experienced. And so you get the Jordan Peterson meme. So you're saying we're saved by the government, like, you know, that kind of stuff. You get the clown shoes meme because these arguments are they're awful, number one. But then you just keep repeating them after after being corrected. And so the, the memes and the, and the joking, it, it didn't start that way, but it ended that way because that's a very effective and powerful tool to use to highlight how silly something is. Now, I could also take, you know, do a, a 10 point thread about how silly what Scott and Neil said that day was, which is something that something, someone like Scott would do, but that's not as effective. And so I'm going to do what's as effective as possible. That's not, it's not sinful to do it. Um, Scott's, Scott can respond and, and talk about how silly I am in a 10 point, you know, you know, thread, but between a meme and a 10 point thread, the meme, I don't make the rules. This is just more effective in our culture. And so I'm going to use the tool that's most effective. And that's kind of what I've been doing. I don't think it's uh, a sign of disrespect. I think it's engaging, um, someone where they're at. And, and quite frankly, we were at the meme level before the memes even started. They were just memes with only words. Those are terrible memes, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So for I, you, well, you know, thank you well, for answering that. So sure. it's you are doing, you, whatever you're doing, you're doing strategically and you're using the memes. 100%. I grant that. But the other side, they don't speak the memeology language. They don't understand those things. No, so they what they're saying Oh, that's a great question. Like, that's a great question. See, so what they are saying is like, okay, we want to sit down on the table with you guys, but you're out here mocking us with these memes and everything else they don't understand it so it's yeah. like this is you great. are saying something else going left they're saying something else people are going right we, so we, now when you guys say you yeah. want to sit down uh have a discussion with them to them they're saying like why should we sit down with you guys after you've already called us names via the memes there, this yeah. is very but good Violet, real quick Violet, go ahead, thank go ahead, go ahead. you for those questions yeah, no those are really and i wish yeah. we could have you on longer yes, i really appreciate what you're doing in. but um, thank you <laughs> but I, I want eighty, yeah, to answer that. We I just have the other folks to, so yes, we'll, yeah. we'll see you later. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah, yep. you answer. I'll, I'll watch okay. and listen. Okay, we'll answer. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, so the the question is, I'm doing it strategically, but now G three is all offended and and they won't, you know, not offended, but they they just don't think we're serious now. My response to that is, they didn't think we were, they didn't think we were worthy of responding to prior to the memes. That that was that's the whole point. That's why the memes were deployed, and so. um they already came to us with, you have nothing valuable to say. So we started memeing. And let me just, I'm going to be straight up and I'll look into the camera so you know I'm legit. I don't care if G3 comes to the table, if they're going to come to the table the way they, the way that they've been acting. I don't care. And so I'd like to come to the table, but here's the reality. You're going to have to come with more than just the nonsense that you've been doing for weeks. And if you're going to let a, a meme come in the way of that, then clearly you're not going to come with without the nonsense that you've been dealing with for weeks. And so I do want to work together, but the, at the end of the day, like, like right now, this is about, um, this is about other people besides the G3 people. In my opinion, I, I don't want to, to break up with G3, but if it's going to be that way, it's going to be that way. And I've got lots of people that, that, that care about what I have to say and they care about what John has to say and they care about what, what Joel has to say and all this stuff. And it's valuable to show them how clown shoes the other side has been. That's valuable to me. And so I'm going to do that. You know, one of the things, uh, good points, AD, that Violet uh, brought up that I thought about is the the, the anger or, or, or the irritation, the frustration people have with Josh Bice's comment this morning. I don't think was about, it, it really is not about fonts, okay? It's, it's just not. It's, that's not the issue. The issue, I think, is... As you said, AD, that this has been going on for weeks and there's this feeling of disrespect mm -hmm. and the fact that there was nothing substantive like there was no like like it's just like really that this has been an intense debate and that's what we're going to talk about. Like you don't have a copyright on a font now, you know, granted. And they changed it, by the way, just so people know they did change their font. So that terrible a, move <laughs> within a few hours. Yeah, so, it, it, so 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 Violet's concern um, has already been somewhat alleviated. They 
they, they I, I think they genuinely thought we they were paying homage. And then when Josh did that, they're like, I, I guess not like where this isn't. They thought it might have been an olive branch or something. And it, it, it's yeah. not. And so they changed it. And, and so that's fine. They changed it. But it, it, I think people are just like, Josh, really, like you're, you're the you're president of G3. And you've been talking about Christian nationalism for weeks and how horrible it is. And now there's a statement yep. clarifying it and the font. And it's just yeah. a draft. It's a draft. Yeah. So it was the level I, of proportion. Straining I, I at think we do, we do need to talk, but we, but but it, it can't be. It's no longer on their terms. Like it can't be the way they've been conducting themselves. And again, the memes are very effective, and they're in your face. But they were memeing this entire time just with words. And again, these are terrible memes. The the, the poll memes and stuff like that, or the or the circle eye, the the two eyes meme. Scott 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 uses that emoji all the time. That's a meme. It's a it's a not a oh, very yeah, good yeah, yeah. one. Most of the time, right. you got to pick your spots. And my, for my money, the, the person who's picked his spots the best with that emoji is Tom Askell. I've never seen anyone use those those eyes better than Tom <laughs> Askell does. That's a meme, though. So 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 let's not pretend that like we started the memeing. They they're just we're just better at it, basically. Yeah. <laughs> um. We we have. I, all right. We're gonna go to. Oh, I guess. I thought. Let's see. We got a bunch of people waiting in the chat here. Um, oh man, Billy Billy Allred's gonna be next, and then Gordon Sanchez. Gordon Sanchez. Um, all right. Well, before we do that, though, someone I, I, I feel like we need to show this because um, I don't know how they do this, AD. I don't know if you have it, but somehow people super are chats. Yeah. paying money to to chat here. They're called so, super chats. Yeah. Super chat. So we got a super chat from uh, Jesse Tinsley uh, with the USA be being so large and possibly being a country with many nations. Well, I said that earlier today, AD. Um, I, I, I yeah, said yeah. I think it were an empire with many nations. Would a great amount of our issues be dealt better with a strong implementation of federalism, or is this opposed by many Christian nationalists? That is a super good question. I'll I'll, I'll do it first, and then AD, if you want to crack at it. So I, I, I happen to think that how do, how do I get the super chat down? Is that the thing with them? Do they just okay? There we go. I'm like the I super know. chats just stay there. Nope, nobody um, gives me super chats. No, <laughs> I think that, that, that I, that's like the second I've gotten and I've never seen one twenty dollars. So thank you, Jesse. Um, you know, if you want federalism, Jesse, uh, you, you can got get it. federalism for twenty dollars. Twenty bucks. <laughs> twenty bucks. Um, yeah, I, I actually would love to see a return to federalism where we have strong states and local municipalities. I'm a localist. I think that um we we're one of our big problems is we have a scale problem. There are not enough or there's actually too many people and not enough representatives for them um so you know if you have uh 10 people let's say they're gonna be represented by one guy that guy's pretty accountable because you know where he lives um you you have a share of his time if you are one guy representing a thousand people not as accountable you get yep. lost in the crowd there's yep. barriers to entry and so I think we're in a place where the central authority is too strong and we it'd be great to get back to a local control of a lot of these things. Um, the drag queen story hour should be a local and state issue. That's where Christians should fight it. That's where a lot of Christians are fighting it. But there are elements that um, on the other side, I, I say the left, they want to make this part of civil rights legislation. They want the center to dictate to every little town in America that they must allow drag queen story hour. So, so I think for, from my perspective, I haven't seen this actually clearly defined, but practically speaking, the people who call themselves Christian nationalists or are just even active as Christians in the political sphere, I think they do tend to be more active on the local level and because yep. and, and, that's where you can get things done. And so, so I'm positive about that, but yeah, Hey, if there's people out there that want a uh, Christian dictator or something like I, I haven't heard that, I wouldn't yep. be surprised but AD, what do you think about that? No, I, I think I think that's the way to go as well. I mean, it, and it makes sense for 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 America in particular because we have, you know, different you know denominations that are fairly large and things like that. And um, you know, it, th these are questions though. I'm, I'm just going to be totally honest that they're they're worth thinking about and kicking around right now. But we're just really we've got like a thousand steps before we even really have to consider it. But I, I think I think 100. Yeah, that that makes perfect sense. And, and, and I, I should say someone saying that we would execute James Lindsay if we had power. Yeah, so. that guy's an idiot. I, I'll say it. I mean, this uh, on my channel, I just call him an idiot because that's an idiotic statement. Um, obviously, that's not true. But I will say that guys like James Lindsay would have Lindsay would have absolutely no impact on the government because why should he? Yeah. Well, with that, <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> You're going to get in trouble for that one. All right, Billy uh, Allred is here. Hey, I'll Billy, how are you that. doing? <laughs> hey, good, guys. Nice to see you all. It has been a few months since the men's retreat. Yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah. You're going to come again? Uh, probably. Probably. If you don't, if you haven't totally uh, alienated me on this issue. <laughs> uh-oh. Uh-oh. All I'm, right. I'm an old <laughs> friend. Of, I'm an old friend of Scott and Nile. <laughs> That's yeah, good. I was just with a friend. I was just with uh, Josh Abatoy's dad last week, who's friends with Scott. And uh, an, is it a Nile? Have I been saying it wrong? I don't know. I don't think I even say it right. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and I think he's, <laughs> he's you know, I, I don't have any problem with them or anything I personally, but, yeah. but yeah, you, all right. Tell me what, what is your comment or question? Well, I, I've got two and I, and they're, they're very different. So I want to, I want to say something about the mocking part. Cause that is, that's been a bit of a turnoff to me too. And I just want to give an example of it. You know, John, the other day on your Facebook page, you posted about the Tennessee coffee shop experience. And right. uh, I posted a comment there uh, that I didn't think the direction you were going, you know, was was exactly accurate. I disagreed with you a little bit, but pleasantly, you know. Okay. Very, and uh, like six or seven people already have have reacted to that with the laughing meme, right? And it's not that I'm thin skinned. Like I could care less. What, what was your comment? And I don't know. Did I laugh at it? What, I don't, no, I don't you have didn't, any. You didn't laugh at it. You, okay. you actually responded to it. Um, I don't remember though. My comment was that I don't think this is an example of Christian nationalism. I think it's just an example of the freedom we have in this country that's being expressed by probably a Christian business owner who wants that right. environment in their coffee shop. Right. Um, so anyway, I just think, you know, the fact that people are laughing at me making. Well, uh, it, 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 yeah, it wasn't about cultural Christianity. I could probably clarify this pretty easy. It was about um, or it wasn't about Christian nationalism. It was about cultural Christianity. You're right. Uh, you're right. So, I'm sorry. So that was um, because the net had broadened and the attacks were now on cultural Christianity, which and that yeah. was when I was like, wait, this is insane, guys. Like, I can understand the Christian nationalism thing, kind of. But like, we should all want a Christian culture. So and it just happened to be a day I was in Tennessee. And I just walked into this coffee shop and they were playing all fly away. There were no rainbow flags. Everyone was nice. There was scripture on the wall. And I just thought, right. I really like this. And, and this is, um, it, it's so different. So, so yeah, like if I had said though, that this is Christian nationalism. Yeah. I think, I think your critique would be fair that like, no, that there's no like government, anything going on, but, but yeah, as far as like Christian culture that, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, and I'm does just that help? Yeah, I, I, my point about it is is not about your comment or our disagreement about that particular thing as much as it is if you've got people that are, I know, I know you can't be responsible for your followers, all of that, but if, 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 if the people who are agreeing with you are coming on there and laughing, make, you know, mocking basically with the laughing emoji, the, the folks that are trying to have a reasonable conversation with you, that's just not helpful. And, and I, and I think that's part of what's making this issue more divisive than it needs to be. Yeah. But let me, but let me move past that. Cause I don't, you, you've already reacted to that with the last person and I appreciated your comments, but I am a local elected official. Okay. I'm it's, it's very small. I, you know, we got less than 2000 residents in my township. I'm on a township board of three. So I have limited jurisdiction in multiple ways you know, checks and balances. But I have generally approached my role in a pretty libertarian minded way, historic uh, libertarian way. And, and I would never think of making an ordinance th that would that would would come out of, for instance, uh, you know, the second table of the law. I would first of all, it wouldn't be within my jurisdictions because there's already state laws against murder and theft and things like that. But I, I, I'm wondering, would the rubber meet the road a little bit here in some of these conversations if we actually had a conversation about what your view of my role as a local legislator or leader should be under Christian nationalism versus what I have been doing? Uh, you know, how, how should I make the reign of Christ prominent in Union Township, Pennsylvania? Yeah, I love this question. Uh, Ad, do you want to do a crack at that first, or do you want me to? Um, why don't you go first? Because I was uh, I was kind of distracted by the comments here, but I did hear basically what he said. 
Oh, I'm not even looking. I don't at know what kind so, of local. I don't know what kind of local so, official he is. So. Yeah, what are what what what's your? Can you say or no? Yeah, so it's a township supervisor position. Okay. Yeah, oh. in, in a small township, so we have yeah. le, you know limited legislative, but I can certainly enact things like burn yeah. bans. I can I can make laws about making sure you mow your grass. I don't sure. do those things. I protect your property at all costs. I say you yeah. are the ruler and the king of your own property. Sounds like and, you're doing pretty good. Well, that's all libertarian minded. I don't see that necessarily as, as uh, you know, cr enacting Christ's well, reign. When, when you say libertarian, are, are you like Marie Rothbard type? Li like what? What? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So classical libertarian, more yeah. mm -hmm. not the Iron Ron Rand. Paul, Ron Paul type. Yeah. Ron Paul. Okay, gotcha. Um, so, so, so on on a local level where you are, have you had Drag Queen Story Hour come to your town? Have you had any of that? Or yeah. No? So we. We have Bucknell University here, so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the local library, but they're definitely having things at the university related to this. And I'm on Republican committee as well here. And so when we had our DA candidates coming forward, because we got a DA's race right now, we asked the DA's, hey, are you willing to prosecute um, those that would have drag queen, you know, sponsor drag queen <laughs> shows in libraries for children that children are able to be present at under laws you know that are for against uh sexualization of minors so i'm i'm for that i, I was the one asking those questions you know are you willing to do this i think it should be outlawed under those kinds of laws uh, yeah I'm, i mean is that libertarian though so, is, so like at some point it's not just like the non-aggression principle sure. in the free market like there's something sure. beyond that that we're drawing from i think to to make laws and so we have to it goes back to religion ultimately like all like we believe that there's a god who created an order and we're supposed to conform ourselves to that order so um it does take work to separate out like what is your responsibility versus in, in our system especially the state responsibility the national or the general responsibility and then you know local citizens and what can you regulate and what you can't but my, as a general rule, I think the vision is for every single person to uh, um, submit themselves to the ordinances of God. And even those who aren't saved, uh, they we call it I call it earthly good. It's not actually heavenly good. It doesn't please God in that sense. But but they can um, give like giving Jesus said, give your uh, son son a fish when he asks for a fish instead of a snake. Like they can follow. Um, the law externally. And in so doing, uh, it, it creates a situation where the church is more protected and people can live more peaceable and quiet lives as we're supposed to strive for. So like if you have an abortion clinic in your town and they're killing babies or you have a library and they have a drag queen story hour coming, like I, I would just be looking at like any mechanism that you can possibly use to fight Absolutely. that. If, if yeah. you have, um, yeah, like property rights, protecting that because we don't believe in stealing, right? A second Amendment, uh, we, we call it Second Amendment, but it's really just the right for protecting yourself. If right. the state were to come and say, Let, we're going to, th this actually just happened in a local municipality in Arkansas. I don't know if you saw it, where they did um, ATF. This was like two weeks ago. So we're going to come into your, your town um, if you don't, well, you need to submit all the concealed carry permits to us. We, we need to know who those people are. And it was the town supervisor and the sheriff and one other guy like got up there and held a press conference and basically said any federal official that comes into our town to violate the rights of our citizens will be arrested. Well, and, and I did that during COVID. I put out a yeah. statement to the newspaper that said, I will not enforce any draconian COVID jurisdictions that our governor puts out locally. Uh, in fact, I'll help our local citizens subvert them because they're unconstitutional. I mean, I'd I'm like to live say, in your I'm town. Just, I'm just going to say, Billy, it sounds like you're doing a good job. I mean, listen, like you do the you do the best you can in the role that you're in. You know, you don't ha you're not king for the day, so you, you can't act like one. Right. But you do have a jurisdiction and you do have, you know, a megaphone of of, you know, commensurate size to what your role is. And you're sounds like you're using it. Um, but, but let's let's put the rubber on, on the road here. What if, for instance, uh, uh, an islamic mosque they want to open an islamic mosque in my township my yeah. right now my perspective on it would be you know religious freedom i'm a baptist I, I believe in religious freedom freedom of conscience so you have a freedom to be wrong and to to the 
all the way to the pit of hell, unfortunately, when it comes to those, those things. So, it, you know, I'm not going to do anything to stand in your way. I'm not going to try to pave your path. I'm not going to try to help you, assist you, you know, beyond what I would in sure. any, any other citizen. But, but I, I, that's a kind of the kind of question I have about this Christian so, nationalism is, does it mean you think I should try to stop Islamic mosques from being erected in my township, for instance? Well, I know at the very least, if you're holding a ceremony for Veterans Day or, you know, some civil ceremony, you're not going to ask the imam to come and do the invocation, right? <laughs> I'm not. Right. So right. so right. that and that's not a libertarian thing. That's because you're a Christian and you know this is false and you, you're going to try to find a Christian if you can to come and give that invocation. So so there's things like that, like privil privileging um, Christianity in ways that you're not going to privilege those other um, religions. And and so I think that a lot of the what people are thinking about when they think about like we want religion is is like what Trump said when he was running. We're going to say Merry Christmas. Right. We're going to have nativity scenes for Christmas. Um, we're going to have invocations and they're going to be Christian invocations at public ceremonies. We're going to swear in on the Bible, not not another book on the Bible itself. Um, it, and there's probably like a lot of things I'm not thinking of right now, but it, it's just because uh, at the founding of our country, and this is, I go back to this and I don't think it's perfect. No, nothing's, you know, perfect except the scripture and, and, and God's truth. But, but we did have, um, a tolerance in many places, not all places. The Puritans in particular, weren't very tolerant. They even kicked out Baptists. That's what people are freaking out oh, yeah. about. But, <laughs> but in the South more, you know, I, and I'm more Jeffersonian. So I'm more, I, I would consider myself to be more federalist, more like tolerant in a way, more well, federalist. What's it? Oh, yeah, I would have been an anti-federalist because I'm a federalist. Is anti <laughs> well, yeah, you know I what I mean. You, you know what I mean. I'm, I'm with you. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't want to confuse anyone, but that that's one of the most confusing things of history is the anti-federalists were the true federalists. But anyway, um, so so like in South Carolina, there were Jewish congregations. There weren't many, but there were a few, and it's like they didn't really bother anything. And guess what? They had to. Um, they, they had to adjust themselves to a Christian society in that case because mm -hmm. they were they were there more or less as guests or as right. they were outsiders the in some ways. They, they were exceptions. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, same thing, you know, with in other states that weren't controlled by the Puritans. Yep. There was generally a more religious tolerance, but there was a general respect for Christianity. Like, like in some states, there were even uh, laws that you had to subscribe to a certain statement of faith to run for public office and stuff like that right so you know i i don't think there's a perfect or like um and i don't have like an ideal like this is exactly the way it must be i just have a direction in my head and i'm like sure. we need more christianity we need to preserve the christianity we have and um yeah with, with, with in the case of a muslim mosque you're you have to look at the prudence of that if you fight that Definitely. how are you going right. to fight it and then what kind of lawsuits are you going to have? And what kind of, is it worth, like, are there other things you could do with your time and your political capital that would be better? Like if you could save babies from being aborted, let's say, versus shutting down the Muslim mosque and there's only 10 Muslims, like, you know, y y there are, that's what politics is. It's a lot of yeah. um, calculating. So I'm talking too long. Anyway, I think John, Katie. real quick, I'll just say it, it yeah. again, it's a matter of prudence and what you're able to do. Like right now, you know, it might be enough for you to just, you know, every time that there's a, a a prayer, you're having the Christian pastor come. It's just it's just assumed we're doing Christian. We're setting up Christmas trees. We're doing Christmas Christian things, you know, civically. We're not doing any Muslim things civically. That might be enough for right now. I don't think there's anything in the Bible that you could find that would make you think that it should it should just be assumed that a mosque should be able to be erected in your town, and lots of things to make you think the opposite. So I don't think there's anything wrong with. Uh, having a long-term goal of having zero mosques in your town, if you if you're if you have a mosque in your town, there's nothing wrong with that. And then making and then passing an ordinance to ban it in the hypothetical Christian ideal, we're again we're not even close to that right now. We got like ten thousand steps ahead of it. That's not wrong and that's not unbiblical and that's I think it's very moral to to yeah. have that as a goal. But right now, the little small things I think are probably enough for your role. Yeah. So, Ad, what you're saying is Billy's a Christian nationalist. <laughs> he's he's, he's really, one whether he really wants to really be or sure not he doesn't want that label he it doesn't matter you have it if you're a christian in politics you've got the you, label you can't so. fight it now yeah so Don't no worry. hey billy I, it's good to see you and uh looking forward to seeing you again yeah this uh fall 
Um, so Earl Starbucks says this is another one of one of the what did you call them? What is super, super chats? chats? Ban the mosque. <laughs> he says ban the mosque. <laughs> Simple as that. They are Five not bucks. just houses Dump. of worship. They are Sharia law courts whose construction signifies the subjugation of the area under Sharia. Well, I guess from their perspective, some of them probably would be the case. Um, but well, but yeah, you also got to think of the downstream consequences, right? Yeah. Like like this. It, but anyway, again, that that's it, we're not there yet, so it's not even worth it. But this whole reflex yeah. reflex to be like, oh, I'm pro Christian liberty. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be okay with every pagan temple that they want to erect yeah yeah all right gordon sanchez oh my is, uh, goodness here you know uh what billy said really offended me um i the fact that he wouldn't be inclusive of somebody who is only trying to exercise their plural you know i'm working on a statement right now actually um over here at, at the gospel coalition we've been working on this feverishly all day because we want people to come home this is a great opportunity for people to come home. So I wrote up a statement. It took me about, oh, 16 hours um, in between IPAs. And uh, it is called the Statement on Principled Pluralism. It just says, do what you're told. But, you know, I think that gets, <laughs> it get you know, it reminds me of that verse that says, lead me into the water where your trust is without borders. And what we want is we want, <laughs> we want a borderless land. What is, what is the gospel other than inviting us into the water to commune? Uh, you know, so I do have a question, actually. I don't want to, you know, I want to follow the rules because that's integral to my belief system. Integralism. Um, wow. Well, at first, I actually have a list of denunciations for both of you. Um, <laughs> first, I'd like you to denunciate Brad, Paisley, uh, Brad Paisley's music, all of it, before he uh, went on, uh, before he performed for Obama. I'd like you to, denun to denounce the state of Oklahoma. Uh, Mexican beer because it's cultural appropriation. Um, I'd like you both to denounce your first, your fourth paternal grandfather on either side. Uh, I would like Jonathan specifically to denounce the uh, declarations of secession, especially for Alabama. And, um, you know, and then you can just denounce generally your, uh, you know, your aberrant theologies. Um, so yeah, that's, that's mainly what I have to say. Um, you know, I, I, <laughs> But, you know, really, come home. Come home. What are you, it's, Catholic? It's time, <laughs> it's time to come home. Come, okay. Come home. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Gordon Sanchez. Thanks, Gordon. Much appreciated. Uh, for that. Um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> like, totally. So do you do you or recant, I guess, is the, the real question here. Um, <laughs> I mean, G Gordon's very convincing. I, I might have to consider that. <laughs> well, we're, well, man, we've already been going over an hour. There's, there's one final, I don't know if, should we finish this slideshow? There's only one more slide. And I was I just going to say yeah. the other thing that the other play that's being made is that this is a power play. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I've seen this a few times, Virgil Walker, as people compete for attention as leaders or members yeah. of the newest tribe movements come and go, this is a passing phase as I've always, um, as I always have, I will put my faith in Christ, proclaim the gospel and live faith in public. And then he said, um, building your own brand is difficult when you're trying to grow followers. It's easier to leverage the previous success of others. And guys, this is just so sad. Know. Like, and, and you know, honestly, like I, I, don't, I may have shared this and I may have shared a joke or two about it, but honestly, this, they've been, they've been going with every play that I remember the first time around, you know, back in 2018, when I started this or whatever I started, this is the accusation, you know what I mean? Oh, you know, the, he's JD's just trying to build a platform. Oh, you know, he's just looking for attention and, and stuff like that. And, you know, I knew uh, what I was doing. And, 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 you know, if I wanted a platform, I had a very easy path in front of me. You know, I had, you know, I, I, I did a, a, you know, I had a relationship with Jared C. Wilson. You know, he had me kind of writing some articles for his little blog that he did for Mid Midwestern Baptist. Um, you know, and, and we were friendly, like we were so friendly, like, you know, I, I, we, we visited him just for fun and he watched my kid and stuff like that, you know, I mean, that kind of thing. And so I had a path laid before me and multiple times along the way, I, I got the conversation, John, I, I'm, we don't, we don't think we ever talked about this, but I'm sure you've gotten the conversation too, that will, you know, if you were, if you were just, you know, willing to play ball, I mean, if you were just yeah. a little less, uh, less aggressive, like, you have all the opportunity in the world. I've gotten that yeah. I, they people have been dispatched to tell me this people from X to nine and other things to tell me that I've got a lot of, I've got a lot of talent and this and that. And you know, they butter you up, but basically what they're trying to get you to do is to stop. Yeah. And you know, at the end of the day, like I know it's not true about myself, 
And the thing is, a guy like Virgil, like I'm sure, fielded these accusations before. Oh, he's just looking. I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't talked to Virgil about this, but I'm sure it's happened because it happened to all of us, you know? And it's just like to see that I knew they were following the playbook last week. And then to see this today, it's just like it's 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 not fun to see people that you were friendly with, uh, you know, use the very same tactics that you and them used to like make fun of Big Eva for using. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's it, no, the thing so is true. like, you know, for a fact, they know it's a tactic. It's a tool. And then they'll rip you, you know, in one tweet. And then in the next tweet, talk about how, oh, we're about the tone, guys. Watch the tone. And I'm just here standing on the truth of Christ. It's like, really? <laughs> well, well, it, 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 there's a contrast. There's a clear contrast. And, 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 and it's not named, but it's like, well, I'm doing this. Clearly, there's people, though. Like, like I'm a bulwark. I'm, I'm the lone bulwark. Yes, you know, yes. I'm I'm standing against all these people who don't want to to do that. And um, Scott O'Neill said something similar. I, I don't know if I need to read all of these. It, it, nah, it's a, it's all pretty it. similar. Yeah, I don't need to like that. That's my uh, my weakness. Sometimes I want to over like source things to show a narrative. But um, but yeah, like I, I just wanted to say one thing about the power play uh, argument, because I've heard this before from other people that the Christian nationalists are just after power. Look, guys, if they were after power. They would not be calling themselves Christian nationalists right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the last thing they would call themselves, and they'd be ingratiating themselves to the big ministries, like like even G three. I don't know, if, you know, they're they're not they're they're big, they're big enough. Yeah, like G three, big or, enough. Yeah, you know, Ligonier and uh, you know, Desiring God, Gospel Cool, or whatever. Like they would be, they would be trying to play the game to to get into positions so that they in in those circles if they really were after power, but they're not, they automatically are blacklisting themselves from ever gaining a platform in any of those organizations as soon as they call themselves Christian nationalists. So the idea that this is after like they're after power is ridiculous to me. Um, yeah. They want the civil magistrate to use power righteously. That's all it is from yeah. that's the, that's the in general, what it is. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very silly. And it's, again, it's like, it's got the, 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 this is the thing that I, I you know, I, I'll still give you guys advice. Like, because if G3, anyone from G3 and their side watches this, I'll still give you some advice. Like these kinds of tweets, like the Virgil one in particular, I'm standing here on Christ as I've always had, and they're building their platform. And it's like, guys, like you, you don't get, you don't get social media. You don't. That, this is why we're dominating the meme war. You knew you tried to do the memes. It just doesn't work for you. We're dominating it. These kinds of tweets are so transparent. Your sycophants will love them. Bottom line, your sycophants love everything you do. But these tweets, for people that are in the middle, they see them, man, and they see what, what. Why is he doing this? Like this is what this is what they did to you. I remember when Russell Moore said that. You know, like it's like it's the same thing. We like we've been through this before. They don't. This kind of stuff, like. <laughs> It, it's not helping you. I don't want this for you guys. I want to work with you. But the problem that we have here is that people are losing respect for you. And th no. that's not good for anybody. That's not good for me. And that's not good for you. And it, and I, I, I don't think you're going to take this advice, but stop using that playbook. Pick a different one. Do it differently. There's so many things you could do differently that would still put you squarely in the driver's seat. In my yeah. opinion, I think. Well, we've been going for almost an hour and a half and, and there's so many more things that we could talk about, but I feel Ooh. like, uh, we probably for the sake of your time, AD, I know you don't have much and, uh, I appreciate you giving it to us. Um, and then for the, some of the listeners and for me, <laughs> we probably need to land the plane here. Um, you know, I, I guess in closing, I, I do want to say, uh, I want to close on a good note here because like, there's a lot to of negativity in every sphere of life. Everywhere I turn, turn on the news. I'm like, I don't want to listen to that. Like it's all bad. Right. Um, now of course, like it was a pretty day where I am and like things around my house are, are fun. And like, you know, there's, uh, I, I like going out and hiking and things like that, but, but socially speaking, like there's a lot of negativity going on, um, out there. And, and I think it's just like, I'm used to it now. And I think a lot of people feel the same way. We're just, we're used to seeing that wherever, wherever we turn, but I do want to encourage everyone with this. I have gotten so many encouraging uh, letters, messages, comments, all of that over the last two weeks from people 
who see exactly what some of you are saying are, are seeing and are discouraged by. They see the same thing. There are tons of people who just want what they would consider to be a normal life. And, and, you know, I, I was just in Tennessee. I was in Kentucky. Um, I, I was uh, with people down there and it, it just gave me even a sense there of normalcy. Like there's a lot of normal people out there. They don't get involved in this drama. Uh, sure. they, they, they just want to live a quiet and decent life, serve the Lord on the local level where they're at. And, and I see you guys. And I just want to say, I, I love you. I'm praying for you. And I think there's a massive opportunity that is starting to unfold before us because there's a leadership vacuum and there's a lot of young guys. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in a chat group with a bunch of young guys who are just, they're pastors, some of them, and they're ready to go. And some of the, like five of them did that statement on social justice or not social. <laughs> that was a slip social, uh, the, sorry, Christian nationalism. There we go. And, and I hadn't even heard of a bunch of these guys, but they're young pastors they are on fire and you know, I, I think that the Lord's raising up uh, leaders. So, so don't get discouraged out there. So, AD, you have anything? Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I think that there's a lot to be encouraged about here too. N number one, I, I, I do think that um, J J James White the other day was kind of lamenting that there's not progress in the conversation being made. I, I totally disagree. I think there's tons of progress being made. I think it's ugly, and it doesn't have to be. It's ugly progress, but there's a lot of progress that's being made. And I, I disagree that most people are seeing all of this and are, 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 are the waters are muddier than they used to be. I think that there's more clarity now. I think there's a lot of people that are kind of sick of the bickering and arguing, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of people getting it now. There's a lot. And so, um, through all of the ugliness, it doesn't have to be this way. I don't want it to be this way, but through all of it, I think tons of people are getting um, a lot of a lot of knowledge about what's happening. And that's a very good thing. I think also that um, this is this whole conversation represents kind of a a, a, a a positive move forward instead of just playing defense. Here's what we could do. We're, we're fighting about what we can do, but at least we're talking about it. And at least there's it, there's there's some action being taken. And a lot of it's at the local level, so you don't hear about it. But some of it is not. Some of it's some of it's yeah. kind of in your face as well. And that's a very, very good thing. And so um, I think that, to be honest, I think that the enemy, and I'm not talking about Satan, although, of course, he's ultimately the enemy. But the enemies, the flesh and blood enemies that, that are politically kind of maneuvering, they want to do everything in their power to get Christians to do nothing. Yes. And to think, to think that. To think if you do something, you must that must be that reflexive neo reaction thing that we were planning all along. Like they, they want you to be kind of hopeless, where it's just like, well, there's nothing I can do, so I'm going to do nothing. That's yeah, what they if, want. If, if everything is Charlottesville, if everything is January 6th, then you'll never do anything. Right. If you think that that's what, that, that that's what it's going to be treated as. Um, that's right. I, I've never gotten so many super chats. I don't even know how to like. So, so here's Look another. This, I, I feel like I have to to show it because it. You it, do. That's the Matthew that's what a super chat twenty is. bucks. Do you either of you plan on doing more engagement with Lutherans or Catholics? I think that is important since I think we have things to learn from each other, especially if we want to see opportunities and challenges. Well, I'll tell you this: I'm going to a Lutheran colloquy uh, in June, and I can't really disclose any. It's private, so I can't really tell you any details. But um, I'm going to be with some Missouri Synod Lutheran pastors uh, in June. And so at talking about the Lutherans, yes, uh, I do plan on it, but I'm waiting for some things to happen. This Corey Mahler situation, I don't think has quite uh, ended in every way. And I think I, I, I think, AD, I honestly think that the guys, some of the, the higher ups think maybe there's like a sleeper cell, like Corey Mahler is like one guy. And like, sure, you know, if, if, if you can get him and do some Jack Bauer moves, like you'll find out where all the rest of them are, because we know there's got to be like they're. They're right under the surface, ready to take over the denomination. Corey was just, you know, dumb enough to go online and say what they're all thinking. Kind of, sure. I, I, right. I, I don't know who's thinking that or what, but but I, 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 it's it's weird stuff that's going on, and I'm waiting for some of that to pass, and then we'll talk about it. So, yeah, I, I'm not planning on doing anything, but I, I'm I'm glad to hear that, John. I know a lot of I've heard of a lot of things like that. So yeah, that's all right. Say. Well, we'll end the the uh, podcast, and we have 300 people live streaming now. Wow. Um, That's well, great, God bless man. everyone. Thanks, thanks for watching. And Ricardo, man, if I'm ever in the South, I'll uh, I'll hit you up. I definitely want to come over. You must just have been looking at something I didn't see. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs>
All right, Ricardo. My, I hope I'm invited. I don't know. All right. All right. I'll talk, <laughs> talk to you later. Bye, God man. bless.